Tuesday, September 4th, in order. I don't you report a verbal update from the recovery team. So we will lead into that and then I will make a comment after that. Uh, thank you, Mayor Condon. Uh, just very briefly, um, sorry, uh, Graham Watt, uh, recovery manager. Um, so very briefly, uh, in summary, there's been uh, significant work in developing a, uh, an engineering study of the river and uh, proposed changes to land use and flood protection in the city. And uh, as a result of those discussions, uh, Council came to an in-camera discussion today uh, specific to different neighbourhoods and overall um, the approach that would be advocated. Uh, so we have information on uh, the report on the um, recovery options and uh, survey results and the intent is that uh, this is made available for um, the uh, made available for the public meeting tomorrow night uh, for a thorough discussion. Um, the so information officer have more information for that. So very briefly, and uh, as Mr. Watt said, there will be additional discussion and lots of time for discussion tomorrow evening for all the questions that folks may have. But uh, these are the resolutions that were passed uh, by council, <coughs> and uh, they they speak for themselves. Uh, so we will be translating these into something that's a little bit less dense, um, because we realize that right now it, it does take a little bit to interpret what that all means. But uh, the, the the quick and dirty is uh, the option selected for. Uh, North Ruckle was a complete buyout. The option selected for South Ruckle was a mixture of buyout for the lowest line areas along with a dike being built. For Johnson Flats, it is raising of dwellings with some limited flood protection or riverbank uh, protection to try to stop the overland flow but not the actual inundation of the floodplain uh, for downtown uh, a dike as well as some uh, some flood wall protection for some high value buildings that are, are really close to the river and for other parts uh, of granby river north and east of downtown another dike there although smaller than the the other dikes we're discussing to the south, on still on the east bank of the rivers, looking at a mixture of moving some buildings, raising others, and overall um, armoring the river bank so that there's no channel migration there. I may just weigh in on this, uh, just for everybody's information. Mr. Graham Watt is now the official recovery manager. He's taken over that role in that position. and. And just saying that council made a tough decision looking to the future. The residents needed us to look out for their best interest. We chose the safest options rather than the cheapest because we never want to have a repeat of the flooding that we had this year and the disaster we had this year. And as our information officer had stated, the resolutions and the decisions that were made in camera have been released. They are for public viewing. And if there's any comments, unfortunately, they'll have to be reserved to the latter part of this meeting. But hopefully, please keep them to a minute. Thank you. Councillor Krog. Oh, just uh, a comment. Or I can wait, because you might say it anyways. No? You don't know what I'm saying. Anyways, it, it closely matches the um, uh, the surveys that were sent out for the neighborhoods. Yeah, so the yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, for your viewing pleasure, folks, we have the results from the, the survey that went out. And I have to say, this has by far and large the best return rate of the surveys I've seen. So um, I think it, yeah, it exceeds 80% for the two most affected neighborhoods and uh, pushing 40 to 50% for the other areas. So I'm, I'm pleased with the quality of the data. And we will whiz through this in five minutes or less. So um, we did a few revisions to the address list and we made a few mistakes uh, with it going out. However, that being said, we're confident that we did uh, mail a survey to everyone that was on our, our list, uh, which was about, all told, 300 uh, combination of business owners and uh, property owners. <clears throat> there were some attempted, uh, let's put in two or three surveys, and we caught those and filtered them out. Uh, we did have a lot of questions about the due date. However, uh, given the response rate that we had, we're confident that uh, folks that wanted to get their survey in were given the opportunity to and did actually get it in. What you see on the left is the result of the first question on the survey. That was not the, just what is your questionnaire code. And on the right were some of the comments. Uh, so yeah. the question for North Rockle was, uh, would you, would essentially, would you like to be bought out or would you like a setback dike to be built and to have your, your houses raised? And so predominantly folks wanted to be bought out. The other category was the second most popular choice, and um, which was somewhat surprising, but, but folks felt that they didn't want either of those two options, and, and so put in other, and uh, there was a, a small minority that wanted to remain in the community and have a dike. These are the comments from the other category. Um, the one that, that stood out for a recovery manager was cautious haste and uh, fair settlement, uh, which is what we're trying to do. South Rockle was very split. And so you can see the, the dominant uh, opinion was to have a dike and to, to remain in the neighborhood with a, another good chunk of people that wanted to be bought out. And of course, the, the other category. Again, lot, lots of comments came in through the other category. Johnson Flats, the way this question was is how well will the proposed solution meet your needs because there weren't two big options for decision in Johnson Flats. So this was a really mixed bag of, on a scale of one to five, how is this going to meet your needs? seemed that lots of folks felt it kind of would or really would or wouldn't at all. And it was normally in a survey distribution, you'll see the, the bell curve, so you'll, you'll see a peak somewhere. There's no real peak in this data. You know, if you were to call it a peak, even though with such a small number, it's hard to say it is, it would be somewhere around, you know, three-ish, um, which is kind of a, a, a lukewarm response to what was proposed, and so uh, we'll have to look further into to why that was, but nonetheless, the, there was no big decision, option one or option two, it was just, is this gonna work? Similar story with downtown, although uh, far different distribution. <coughs> there were lots of people that said that putting a deck downtown would not meet their, their um, flood protection needs at all. <coughs> which uh, I am interpreting based on other conversations and feedback from folks downtown is that 
it has to be a dike and additional uh, improvements to the storm and sewer infrastructure so that there's no backflow there. All right, thank you. We now move on to questions from the public and the media. Again, please stay within the subject matter of the agenda. Lady in the front. Yes, thank you, Your Worship Kate Sillis for the Grand Forks Gazette. Um, what, where do I start, you guys? <laughs> Give me a lot to work with here. Um, so first of all, given that this decision on flood protection measures was made in camera this afternoon, uh, and given that we're six short weeks from an election, um, does council have any appetite to make the voting record on that public at this point? That's the number one question I've gotten. Can I? That again, please. The in she camera? Who voted, 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 voted for what? Um, is that going that to be made public? It's not been released out of in camera and it's staying in camera. That will be really? staying in camera. Okay. Why? Can I come? Go ahead, Councilor Butler, as long as it stays whatever. Yeah, I did camera. vote not to go in camera today. I think it should have been discussed in the public eye. There's some things that could have been done in camera, like the release of the hydrology report that was in camera and needed to have a decision to come out. There's things we could have done in camera and then had the regular debate in public. I think it might have been boring listening to all of this banter back and forth for three hours. <laughs> but um, yeah, I would have preferred to do a public. I'd be quite happy to release um, how we all voted on the different issues, but that would be a decision of council to release it from in camera, otherwise I can't comment. And the reasoning behind that is because of the sensitivity of the material and of who voted what and because of of course, the safety of councillors and the elected officials. Safety? Yeah. <laughs> Can I follow up then, if I may? So I understand that the voting record is currently being held in camera. Would council entertain a motion to release that from in camera at this point? I mean, we're six weeks from an election, and what, three of you are planning on running for re-election at least? Would council entertain that motion? Is that something that it's been considered? It it's something that has to be debated in camera. We can't make that motion at an in camera yeah. meeting. Yeah. That was a recommendation from staff, and uh, I think most of the councillors adhere to that recommendation. So. We never did have a discussion or a. Oh, we did. We, yeah. could, we, we did didn't have a motion forward. No. no, because it was recommended from staff that we do not release that. We're talking in camera here. <laughs> okay, so at this point, that's a recommendation from staff that that be kept in camera and council will not be releasing that at no, this point? I, mostly for safety reasons, as yeah. Frank said, camera and camera. Go ahead. Thank you, Worship, again then. So if we're talking for safety reasons here, does council have reason to suspect that there may be some safety concerns? Were there threats made or anything of that nature? I think we're getting ahead of ourselves here at this point. Well, you said for safety reasons, yeah. well, so if there's, there's always There's there. always situations like this type of nature where there is a certain amount of safeguard that has to be put in place to protect the elected officials because we wouldn't want an incident to occur and then too late. Um, Councillor Bucket. Wouldn't it be the prerogative of each one of us to make that decision if we feel safe or not. I mean, if I release how I voted, I don't see how that's going to impact how Councillor Ross voted. If I'm just speaking for myself and not speaking how other councillors voted, wouldn't that be up to me to make that decision whether or not I feel safe to speak to the public? Be that as it may, oh, Councillor Butler, yeah. be that as it may, Councillor Butler, um, the question is still remains. It's in camera. It stays there. Thank you. I did have a, it's Lori Edinburgh, so I have a quick question for the gentleman with the survey. For example, my neighbor, Frank, just brought his in to City Hall today. He's always been planning on staying. A lot of my neighbors haven't even gone to any meetings or participated because they're staying and government does what it wants anyhow. I was wondering if his survey results that came in today are going to be added so his vote counts anybody who hasn't voted to date, if, if they will be added, if they come in in the next month, say. We don't plan to do that right now. The decision was made by council today. Uh, however, we're happy to revisit that if there's uh, a lot of folks that do want that to happen. Okay. As long as you see them, that's all I care about really, is that you see them and you know the proper figures. 
Did we not have a deadline? Yes. Gentleman back. Les Johnson, GFTV. Um, so you made a decision on North Ruckel, complete buyout. <clears throat> um, so the clock is now ticking, and uh, who determines when that buyout happens? I mean, obviously the province is the one supplying the money, but do you have any idea when that'll take place? Or are people going to have to fix their houses and spend the winter there thinking that next year or the year after, that's not going to be there, it's going to be gone. I know that for people who have people who have lots of equity in their house, they're going to get the money themselves when the buyout happens. But for people who don't have as much equity, let's say 20, 25%, and the bank owns the rest, the buyout's going to go bulk, in bulk to the bank. So if they want to be able to buy a new place, the money that the DFA has given them to fix their place, they probably would be saying, well, wouldn't I want to use that for a down payment on a new place? Like, so they're wondering, I'm sure, how long the time period is from now, when you've made the decision, to the point where they'll have a check in their hand and they can go on with their life. Yeah. To give you a encapsulated answer on that one, is that the decision that was made was only to give direction to the recovery team because if there were no options decided upon, the details of what you're asking <coughs> are all going to be worked out now because now they have, let's say, the go ahead to move forward on these decisions for each area. Based on that, now the details will be worked out and hopefully in a speedy fashion. But until such a time, the recovery team had no idea what to present to the province because no options were decided upon. So that it was high time that a decision was made and the decision was made based on facts. Did the province give you any idea? Uh, well, that's okay. up to the recovery manager and their team and he will respond on that. Thank you, Mayor Conrad. Uh, yeah, very, very important questions on a lot of on a lot of people's minds. Uh, from the survey results, this was this was a common theme about timing uh, concepts in the buyout and, and what would be considered. Uh, there's many individual pathways that would be considered in the housing plan, and tomorrow night, Urban Matters will be presenting the concepts of the housing plan and how uh, the short-term, intermediate, and long-term needs will be met. Um, we have. It already initiated uh, funding requests to the province, and those are in process in discussion. And I believe we'll, we'll talk conceptually about what the pieces are there. But there's there's no funding confirmation at this date. But things are moving forward. The first priority uh, for the recovery team is is making sure that uh, people aren't living in their trailers in our RVs and sheds this winter so that there's safe, warm and dry accommodations and, and we have some building blocks in place and uh, feel optimistic about these options. Um, and we'll talk a bit more about that tomorrow night. Uh, but basically the, the provincial process now is to receive, uh, they've already received essentially the, the housing plan and now they're putting that in context of the long-term needs uh, as articulated in the uh, decisions of council. Thank you. Mr. Crawford. Yeah, um, just so everybody's clear that this is the ask we're sending to the province, right? So we're not buying anything out, we're not doing it, we're asking the province. We're hoping and assuming that they'll do the right thing and take our recommendations and continue on from there, but it is the government so yeah. okay yeah thank you your worship um through you perhaps to the recovery team um i'm just looking for some specifics here what are the total number of homes affected by a buyout and what value did council endorse asking for a buyout act Mr. Watt. Good, Mayor. Uh, thank you so uh the total number actually can't be determined right now. Uh, within North Ruckel, there's 62 dwellings, but in some of the other neighborhoods, it depends on the results of detailed hydrologic analysis that uses the floodplain map and flood hazard map. So that work is being undertaken this winter. So for example, in South Ruckel, there are some very low-lying areas uh, that would be not considered suitable for, for long-term redevelopment. And there's also some areas in, uh, in Johnson Flats where um, there's fairly regular flooding I, as a 5% chance of happening any any given year. So those areas can only be determined with a detailed model. What the concept is, is it's likely somewhere in that 80 to 100 range uh, by the end of the, all the analyses. Uh, but until until those have been done, it, it, it depends. Um, 
there's also some sites along the alignment of dikes that are, won't, you know, once the final determination on exactly where the dikes will go, uh, will determine what houses are there, and, and those, uh, depending on the location of the height, uh, dikes could be anywhere from five to a dozen homes. Follow up then, if I may, uh, Your Worship. So, are there some homes then in some of these neighborhoods that are a little bit borderline, we'll call them, where it depends on a more detailed study to find out if or they won't receive a buyout, if they will or won't? Yeah, it's it, exactly there's two pieces to that. Um, one is the site specific context of the home itself. Um, in some cases, uh, homes may be able to be raised and be saved. And what uh, Don Dobson's recommendation was was that uh, where there was less than half a meter in this flood water as a rule of thumb, um, you know, basically it's feasible to raise that site. So we have a little bit of data on that now from the surveyor's report. Um, but the second part of it is what is the ongoing flood hazard in that location given the movement of water over land in different types of floods. And that's where um, there's other houses that may be determined that it may not be suitable for them to be there long term. So we understand that puts people uh, somewhat in some uh, limbo and so the recovery housing plan definitely takes that into account and uh, it's, it's a long road before um, uh, diking is complete uh, but we expect that once funding is confirmed and once um, you know that that detailed work is is underway that the, the bios can proceed if i may just weigh in on this but we have to be specific that there's no confusion north ruckle was completely unique on its own that there's no possibility there Because you asked a question, I believe, for North Ruckle. No, I said some areas like South Ruckle where okay. it looks yeah. like it could be a little bit of a mixed yeah. bag. Just that there's no confusion to the public regarding oh. North Ruckle is not interpolated into that scenario where there's possibilities of raising houses or so on. Right. Les. Okay. Um, given the answers that I've heard since I asked my question, that leads me to believe mm -hmm. that um, because you're not going to go, oh, well, we want to buy out for this and then we'll get, right, get to you with province for a buy out for the rest. You're, you're going to go to them with an ask for a buy out for 80 to 100 dwellings, possibly 62 of which are in North Ruffle. So, what I'm curious here is that the people in North Ruffle who know for sure they're going to get a buy out, maybe a relocation, but they're definitely going to get a buy out, their clock doesn't really start until you have decided the other dwellings in the other areas that will or is that not the case no no just a quick comment if i may yeah. the assuredness is never there because the province makes that final decision no, I understand no that. mistake when you said that they're sure now they're getting a complete buyout there's no assuredness as was stated even by councillor Krog. make no mistake it, the pro it's subject to the province approving i do understand that what i'm trying to get at here is um, no, we understand that part. Does the clock start ticking for all the houses once you guys finally go to the province and say, this is what we need for a buyout, this is how many properties there are? Or is it, well, we know for sure all these properties here are going to have to go through a buyout, so let's get that underway while we figure out what the other 20 mm -hmm. or 30 might be. Okay. Is that yeah. what the time frames will start to look like? Thank you. Mayor, thank you. Um, that's that's one piece of it. The other piece of it is is the replacement housing plan, which also takes some time to um, ensure that there's suitable dwellings and options available for people, so that we don't lose 62 families from the community. So Urban Matters is is looking at all the uh, all the availability of all the land, and uh, we'll have housing concepts um, in place. Uh, so basically, they they making sure that uh, there's a, a, a smooth transition for that, but obviously initiating the buyout as soon as the funding is confirmed um, and, and an appropriate buyout process is designed, um, then, then that's the, I think the, the preference that would be discussed. And also there's the insurance aspect of it too, because insurance, according to the IBC, does not basically allow you to rebuild somewhere else. So that has to be dealt with also once the buyout scenario is confirmed by the province. There's that issue, but I don't believe that the federal government is going to have an objection to that because if the whole area is deemed non-residential suitable, I believe they'll have to go back. Because in BC, you cannot reconstruct your house on another property other than the one that your house was on. No. For those of you that didn't know that, that's part of the IBC Insurance Bureau of Canada. Okay, so... <clears throat> 
So there's as many issues, in other words, as you can well imagine, that still have to be dealt with. I heard all that, but I'm just curious, in terms of the people in North Ruckle who are looking at this, and they're wondering, uh, is their process going to start independently of South Ruckle and Johnson Flats might buy it, or uh, do they have to wait until you guys have gathered all the data and go for one big thing? That's it. All. Hopefully, you can do it by that area because that's unique and it can be handled on its own. Thank you. That's all. Well Unless I'm incorrect, that sounds good. Okay. Kate. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Um, through to maybe whoever can answer. Um, all of the resolutions on the screen there, does council or the recovery team have a dollar figure on that? So what is the actual dollar ask of the province? It, 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 it will depend a lot on the engineering. Um, do we have a total? That's good. So the dollar figure, and you'll probably not like this, is 60 million plus minus 50%. Okay, so we're either dealing with 30 million, 60 million, or 90 million. And, and so that's the nature of class D estimates, which is what we have right now for the uh, flood protective works, as well as a lot of the other work that we need to happen. Yeah. The next step, or one of the next steps in the process, is to refine those estimates so that instead of plus minus 50%, it'll go down to 15%, and then probably not go much below that, but nonetheless, yeah. that's. To discuss the monetary issues right now is a little premature because there's a lot of detail work that still has to be addressed before we even get that final number because engineering, et cetera, et cetera. So. Well, the, uh, the team needed direction yeah. of which, which way council wanted to wanted them to, to go and so we we're going to advocate for uh, the buyout the, the yeah pretty pretty flood market value plus improvements and and that's that's all we can tell you we're going to yeah. ask for the moon yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, because as i mentioned in my earlier statement it's not the cheapest avenue we're looking at the most the best creative avenue so i think the monetary aspect right now is a Really not of any importance. We're not it holds no. It has, holds no real value right now to discuss the monetary part of it. We didn't ever say, oh well, that would be cheaper. Yeah. We always said right. this would mm -hmm. be best. Mm -hmm. Well, exactly. But I mean, when you're dealing with uh, the buyout of potentially 100 homes, the first question that a lot of people ask, maybe not people in North Ruckle, but people everywhere else are going to ask how much that costs. Um, so fair enough. Um, yeah, I'm good on that. Um, Lori Edward, um, and it's regarding the residents of North Ruckle who are going to be hit really hard with this. Um, the ones that want to stay, maybe the city could consider offering them some sort of trade with the property in South Ruckle, where the owner doesn't want to stay, but the home is fine and can be fixed up. Maybe you know you can consider that for them and offer yeah. to them. Mm -hmm. There's lots of creative options. Lots of creative yeah. options. Sorry, I thought of my other question. Um, so potentially, what costs could this be to the city? I understand, but the first thing people think when they hear numbers like that is, oh my god, my taxes. So would this come to any cost of the city? So definitely cost, but nothing, you know. Nothing of any grave scale because that's the reasoning why it's subject to the problems. Yeah, just to put it out there for people that they don't start to panic. No, no we're not this is, a, this is a provincial and a federal ask, yes. not a tax ask. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because the city would not be, or the corporation would not be in any position to even entertain any of these kind of costs because it would go bankrupt. Yeah. In, in about a couple of yeah. seconds, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Gentlemen in the third row of the uh, this had a question with uh, regards to the uh, survey that was distributed to businesses. I sent everyone uh, an email uh, <clears throat> late yesterday and yeah. I apologize for the length of it. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of words is not uh, something that I'm uh, unfamiliar with. But, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, I've got a uh, frog in my throat. Smoke. The, uh, <laughs> The survey that went out to the business community, uh, I completed it as soon as I uh, received it, but the issue that I had with the, oh, thank you, 
with the uh, uh, survey was that the questions that were asked were related to do you need temporary housing? They weren't actually related to the uh, uh, flood mitigation plan for the downtown. And as an example, our building has a building owner entity and two businesses, and we only received one survey. I know of uh, other business owners downtown that didn't receive a survey, and uh, others who saw the same thing I did, that this has absolutely nothing to do with the downtown flood mitigation plan and didn't bother to fill it out. So I'm not sure that uh, the survey results that you got for the downtown, the way they were presented there, actually provide any information about how business owners feel about it. I attended the public meeting on the 7th and uh, I had lots of questions, like whether there's a lot of information thrown at us at one meeting. Uh, and it takes a bit of time sometimes to walk away, digest that information, and feed it back. And there really wasn't any uh, avenue for that, or uh, and that survey certainly didn't uh, didn't achieve that. And it only went to landlords. So it only went to landlords that were local, because I had landlords that were. <coughs> You know, in Nelson, Cranbrook, Vancouver, that reached out and said, "What about the survey?" So not only actually went to the local landlords, and not like within our building, we've got four tenants, and it only went to our landlord, who's in Nelson, and he didn't actually get it. So, so how many businesses are there in downtown? Like probably hundred or more. Hundred and fifty. Hundred and forty-four. Yeah. And uh, you saw the survey results there for uh, downtown was uh, a turn for. There wasn't any options for downtown. Which is another thing I had an issue with, yeah. but uh, that's uh, irrelevant. The uh, fact of the matter of the survey didn't address any of those uh, aspects of what was proposed for downtown, and uh, the survey didn't actually go to anybody who has business uh, downtown. Is there any question? Thank you. All right. Yeah, we have no, I just asked if there was any comment. Uh, the recovery team. Yeah. Okay, do we have any other questions or concerns from the gallery? Hearing none, I have a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Ross. All those in favor? All those in favor?